cover story tonight is from Pakistan, where fresh incidents of forced conversions have come to light. As many as three Hindu girls, all of them minors, were forced to convert to Islam. Two of them were forced to marry Muslim men. The girls have now approached the court for protection. It is an incident that has sparked outrage not only in India, but in Pakistan as well. Demands are now growing for tough laws against forced conversion in Pakistan. But is the Imran Khan government willing to pay heed? <laughs> These cries are of a father. His daughters were forced to marry two Muslim men at gunpoint. It is yet another case of forced conversion. It happened on the 19th of March in Sindh's Khotki district. Two minor girls aged 12 and 14 were abducted by six kidnappers. Their brother says the family knew three of them. Later, a cleric solemnized their marriage to two Muslim men. He claims that they were not forced to convert. With nowhere to go, the father of the victims was forced to protest outside a police station. Later, reports emerged that another girl was kidnapped on the very same day. The incidents have triggered outrage. Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan faces growing demands to act. There are fresh demands for tougher laws against forced conversions in Pakistan. Ramesh Vankwani is one of the legislators who is supporting a draft resolution created by the Pakistan Hindu Council. Forced conversion ki legislation honi chahiye. Is sawale se humne bilkul Pakistan Hindu Council ne ek resolution draft kiya hai. Wo resolution aaj maine National Assembly ko diya hai. Aur kal main National Assembly ko ye de raha hu. Mera draft ho gaya hai. Aur main chahunga ke sari political parties uske upar mujhe support bhi kare. Aur forced conversion ke sawale se jo bill hai. वो फोर्स्ट कन्वर्जन की जो सिंध असेंबली ने पास किया था वो सिंध असेंबली दोबारा उसको करे और नेशनल असेंबली भी करे क्योंकि अब वक्त आ गया है कि हम परमानेंट हल की तरफ जाएं इंडिया टू इज आउटरीच्ड ऑन संडे द गवर्नमेंट इशूड अ नोट वर्बल टू द पाकिस्तानी फॉरेन ऑफिस डिमांडिंग एक्शन फ्रॉम द इमरान खान गवर्नमेंट एक्सटर्नल अफेयर्स मिनिस्टर सुषमा स्वराज आल्सो सॉट अ रिपोर्ट फ्रॉम द इंडियन हाई कमीशन इन इस्लामाबाद ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट वी ऑन वर्ल्ड इज वन Pakistan did not take India's concerns very well. The External Affairs Minister's request, in fact, triggered a heated debate on Twitter, a spat between Sushma Swaraj and Chaudhry Fawad Hussain, the Information and Broadcasting Minister of Pakistan. It was a top trend on Sunday. When Sushma Swaraj reached out to the Indian High Commission, she got this response. Chaudhry Fawad Hussain termed the case an internal issue of Pakistan. He sermonized the Indian minister, claiming that minorities are under threat in India. But the tough talk did not amount to much because the world was busy discussing this error. In his angst, Chaudhry Fawad Hussain ended up misspelling the name of his country, Pakistan. That's right, Twitter tends to exaggerate everything, including this. Sushma Swaraj fired back. She said, and I quote, I only asked for a report from Indian High Commissioner in Islamabad about the kidnapping and forced conversion of two minor girls to Islam. This was enough to make you jittery. This only shows your guilty conscience. The tirade continued from the other side. And so it went. We are not tracking that exchange anymore. On the ground, though, there's more horror to report. Another shocking incident that shows how growing Islamic fundamentalism is claiming lives in Pakistan. A student in Bahawalpur stabbed his professor. Why? Because the professor had invited female students to a farewell party that he was planning. 
The attacker felt that this was against Muslim culture, as he put it. This incident happened at the government Sadiq Egerton College. The professor's name was Khalid Hamid. He used to teach English. The attacker was later seen bragging about this crime in a video that went viral on social media. There was no sign of remorse. موجود ہے قانون موجود ہے ملک میں آپ کا نام کیا ہے مطمئن نے آپ نے جو کام کیا آپ کے ٹیچر کی ڈیتھ ہو گئی بالکل مطمئن اللہ کا شکر The student was taken into custody by the police. He's been charged with murder. But it's not a sporadic case. The youth are increasingly being pushed towards radicalization. Some recent incidents bear this out in Pakistan. This month alone, a women's march was condemned by extremist groups. They were protesting against growing sexual harassment and the demonization of divorce. Members of right-wing groups threatened the protesters with rape and death for raising their voice. Last year, a school principal was shot dead. All he had done was reprimand a student for missing his classes. That student had skipped school to join a protest organization by an ultra-right group. He accused the principal of blasphemy and he killed the principal. Forced conversion of Hindus, growing Islamic fundamentalism and a prime minister who turns a blind eye to radical elements. The writing is on the wall. Pakistan is no country for minorities. They live under constant threat. Pakistan's persecution of minorities reflects in these numbers. Hindus, I can tell you, made up more than 20% of the population in Pakistan at a time when the country was formed, in the late 40s. That number has now dropped to less than 2%. Besides the Hindu population, Christians and Sikhs are also being targeted. Rights groups are blaming fundamentalists and terror organizations for this persecution. What can Prime Minister Imran Khan do? Nothing, it seems. When Imran Khan rose to power, He picked Atif Mia, a world-renowned economist for his economic advisory council. He needed sound advice. His country's economy was in the doldrums. But that man did not last in that position. Imran Khan was forced to remove him. This was because of the fact that Atif Mia is an Ahmadi. The Imran Khan government had to surrender before the demands of the radical groups. The Ahmadi community are in minority in Pakistan. They identify themselves as Muslims, but the Pakistani state does not acknowledge that. In 1974, they were declared non-Muslim. In recent years, their places of worship have been targeted by terrorists. And who can forget the takeover by radicals of the entire country after Asiya Bibi was set free by the courts in Pakistan. Soon after the Pakistani Supreme Court ordered the release of Asiya Bibi, major protests broke out across Pakistan. Many of them were led by hardliners, people who threatened to hang Asiya Bibi over charges of blasphemy, something that the court had rejected. Clearly, under a weak leadership, the persecution of minorities continues in Pakistan, and there seems to be no light at the moment at the end of this tunnel.